the variable resistor R is set at a resistance of 3.5 ohms. So instead of having that R there, let's put 3.5 ohms. And then the first question, 7.1.1. Let's calculate the total resistance of the circuit, including the battery. Right. So we're going to have RT being equals to RS plus RP. But we are required to include the resistance of the battery. So let's have plus the small r, which is our internal resistance, by the way. The resistance in series, the resistance in series is just going to be the resistance of this variable resistor. It's the only resistor that is in series, right? R1 plus R2 and so on. This is sort of the formula we use. But then in this instance, we only have one resistor in series. So we're just going to have 3.5 ohms. And then now uh, let's go ahead and find the resistance in parallel. We're going to have 1 divided by RP being equals to 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus 1 divided by R3 and so on. So we're going to have 1 divided by RP being equals to 1 divided by R1. So the resistance in parallel, this 10 ohm resistor is in parallel with this 30 ohm resistor. Why am I saying so? I'm saying so because the current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So when the current is flowing, at this point it divides a proportion of the current comes to this path and another proportion of the current comes to this path so that is why we say in that those two resistors are in parallel with each other so we're going to have one divided by 10 plus one divided by by 30 so rp is equals to one divided by 10 plus one divided by 30 to the minus one if you put that in your calculator you should get 7.5 ohms so there we go we have rp uh, the internal resistance is given to us right here is 0 0.6 ohm so that is to say that rt the total resistance will be cost you the resistance in series which is 3.5 plus the resistance in parallel which is 7.5 and then lastly the internal resistance which is 0 0.6 you add all that and you will get 11.6 ohms and that is the total resistance of our circuit including the battery let's move to 7.1.2 7.1.2 Let's find the current measured by ammeter A2. Let me just remove these lines so that we can have a bit of clarity. We're looking for the current in this ammeter <coughs> A2. We're looking for the current in this ammeter A2. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the current. It will be quite easy to find the current if we had the voltage and the resistance, right? But it seems like we have the resistance. There's a heater there with a resistance of 10 ohms. So our resistance is covered. We know that it is equal to 10 ohms. What we can actually do here, we have VT. We have VT. We have the total voltage, right? And then we have the total resistance. We can find the total current. And then by finding the total current, we can then find VP. So let's go ahead and see that VT is equal to IT multiplied by RT. The total voltage is equal to the total current multiplied by the total resistance. The total voltage, that is 24 volts. And then the total current, it's what we're interested in, right? And then the total resistance, we calculated it to be 11.6. So IT will just be, so now it's just a matter of saying 24 divided by 11.6 which is equal to 2.069 ampere. So right, there we go, we have IT. Now that we have IT, IT is just taking us a step closer to our answer. We're not looking for IT, we're looking for the reading on A2, and A2 doesn't read IT. So we can say that VP is equal to IT multiplied by RP. 
if you use this formula you're going to be able to find uh, the voltage that the heater experiences or the vo total voltage on that path that is so vp will be equals to 2.069 multiplied by rp i think rp is supposed to be 7.5 rp is supposed to be 7.5 and if you put that in your calculator you shall get 15.53 volts so now we have vp now we have vp let's go back to our initial information now we have vp we can say that this v here is equals to 15.53 volts so now we can go ahead and find our current because we have we have vp we're going to say that the current on that path will be equals to vp divided by the resistance on that path so vp that is 15.53 and then the total resistance on that path it is 10 ohm so it's easy to see now that the current there on that path should be 1.55 amperes and now we have answered 7.1.2 7.2 the variable resistor is now adjusted to have an even higher resistance value so the resistance of the variable resistor is increased so we no longer have 3.5 here we probably have 10 or something whatever number is greater than 3.5 the question is saying how will this affect the power dissipated by the heater right only increase decrease or remain the same so what is the equation for power again power is equals to i squared multiplied by r so what is going to happen when the resistance increases for the entire circuit when the resistance increases the current is going to go down the current is going to go down if the current goes down and p is directly proportional to i squared then the power should also go down it should decrease so the answer to 7.2 should be decreases as we can clearly see from our equations